Welcome back to the Band Guide. I'm your Band Guy, Colin, and this is another five minute GarageBand expert where I'm bringing you 30 tips and tricks for mixing and recording in GarageBand in 30 days. Today, if you're in the US, is Thanksgiving, and Thanksgiving is actually my favorite holiday. Ignore any of the historic stuff, just as it stands modern day, it's all about being thankful and being appreciative of those around you and taking a moment to reflect on that. And for me personally, that's been an enormous part of having a happy and fulfilled life is having moments to reflect on things that I'm thankful and appreciative of. And this year, I really want to say thank you to you all. I could not be more appreciative of this community. When I started just a few months ago making videos for this channel, I had no idea what to expect. And I've been blown away by the support that I've received, but also by the community itself. There is so much talent in this community, so much amazing music being made. And the fact that I get to share my knowledge with people who are so eager to learn, so eager to create, and I get to be involved in that in some small way is so amazing to me. So. Thank you for everything that you do, and thank you for letting me be a small part of it. Let's dive into a quick tip. This quick tip today is about gain structuring before you even start mixing. So we're not talking about a static mix or anything of that sort just yet. We're talking about the actual clip gain volume. So the volume on the clip itself before it's hitting any of your plugins. So if you're working in Logic or Pro Tools or any of those DAWs, there's a function built into them where you could take this waveform, this little section of this audio right here, and like, let's say you wanna turn up that last word there just a little bit, you could cut it, and then you could just turn up the volume on that clip itself. The advantage of this is that then that audio, by the time it's hitting your plugins, is a more consistent volume, right? See what I mean? So this is really helpful if you have a vocal line that has a lot of dynamic range in it, well, you don't necessarily want it to be hitting the plug-in, uh, the compressor, for example, really, really hard when it's really, really loud, and then not at all when it's quiet. That's gonna really kind of mess with the tone that you're trying to develop with that compression. So, for example, in this verse here, he's way quieter than he is in this chorus here. But you can work around this by putting a gain plug-in first thing in your chain and automating the volume on that gain plug-in. Let's dive into this example and I'll show you what I mean. So in this chorus here, we just have this metering plugin here. It's set to negative 18 dBFS. If you haven't watched my video on optimal recording volume, be sure to check that out. You'll understand this a little bit better. And let's listen, let's pay attention here to how loud he is on this section. sitting nine decibels over at one part there so pretty loud and again we're not clipping because we're still at negative nine functionally so we're not clipping it's still a safe volume but that means that if i'm trying to set a compressor on this section of the song it's gonna be drastically different than the verse of the song or even just a couple of these words in here are a lot quieter than that so the compression isn't going to happen consistently on some of these section words within this song so what we can do is just throw on a gain plug in and then we can go in here and we can bring up automation, hit A to bring up automation, and go down to your gain plugin. And you can automate this gain plugin like a volume plugin, but first thing in your channel, which means that you still have this volume to automate in the last step of mixing when you're really finishing your mix. So you can set all of your static mix, but then you can go in at the end, do all your tweaking at the very end of mixing, and you get more consistent volume going into the rest of your plugins. So it's a little thing, but it really adds up. So let's look at this, this volume level after this automation. So seven decibels lower at its peak, it's much more consistently kind of around that zero. That means that the compression can be set a little more consistently throughout. And then we can use volume automation at the end to finalize our volume, make sure it's at the perfect level at every point in the song. 
that will really help us have a more professional sounding mix. If you do this, this allows your compressors to work a little bit less, which allows them to sound a little bit more natural, which means that you're gonna have a more natural professional sound overall. So don't worry about doing this on every single channel by any means, but on your lead vocal, or if you have something that's way louder than you want it to be in a little section, try this out. This can help you just turn it down for a section, but still have your volume fader to mix any way you want and have consistent levels going into your plugins. If you've made it to the end of this video about clip gain automation, I am confident that you're serious about getting a professional sounding mix in GarageBand. And I wanna give you something to help with that. It is Thanksgiving after all. I wanna give you my six step checklist to a pro mix in GarageBand. This six step checklist just walks through a process to get a professional sounding mix right inside of GarageBand completely free with tools that you already have. So be sure to grab that. I'll link to it in the description below. It's completely free. If this video is helpful to you, be sure to subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video.